What's up guys, Free Nachos here, back again with another episode of our Alan Wake Remastered Let's Play series here on the PlayStation 5. Last time out we had escaped from um, the mental facility where we were being held uh, with Barry, and we were on our way to the farm and we got into an accident, Barry and us got separated. So now we are trying to meet Barry down at the farm so that we can get some information on what's going on from those two brothers who, I guess they used to own this farm, or they currently own this farm. So uh, we did die at the end of the last episode at this part. We don't have any weapons or anything like that. We have no flashlight, no weapons. So this might be a little bit of a running section. So let's go ahead and get right into it. going to be a lot of items that are going to start coming to life. I see a uh, collectible. I see a lot of things. See if we can go ahead and get some of them. This is what killed us last time. Uh, that light. Let's run. One more hit and we're dead. Dodged it. Shadows called over the gate. I needed a light to destroy them to get through. Hmm. Oh, here we go. I hope there'd still be a working generator somewhere around here to power up the old lights by the gate. Nightingale arrests Wake. Agent Nightingale stared at the past outrider. The man was sleeping off one hell of a night. Nightingale felt a stab of envy at Wake's oblivion, but he had a job to do. He put the gun to Wake's head and almost became a murderer. His hand shook and his throat felt tight and dry. Biting his teeth, he tried again to pull the trigger. He lost the nerve. Wake stirred. Nightingale would have to settle for an arrest. Okay. Shit. I <laughs> fell through. Oh! What? Are you, are you serious? Are you serious? I could sense the movement in the woods ahead. Some of the hitboxing on this is bullcrap. I had no choice. I'm sorry, but that was just bull, bull that I took damage from that. At least I have a flashlight now. gonna run okay, get back get back a car 
was driving away from the farm, headed in the same general direction as I was. For all I knew, it was Barry, caught in the consequences of leaping before looking. No, I don't think that's Barry. Heavy duty flashlight? Hell yeah. Any weapons? Not yet. The car was heading for the cabin up ahead. It wasn't far. If it was Barry, I would see the damage soon. I didn't see anyone in the driver's seat. The driver's seat looked empty to me. Don't know if you guys saw that. Is that Thomas Zane? The of light before. I had seen it in my dream. It was a strange spaceman or a diver in a bulky suit. He was the one who'd been placing the pages on my path. The dark presence at large. The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript, growing stronger and stronger, moving like a storm from one scene of destruction to the next. But it was still bound to follow the story and chain to the dark place it came from. When the story reached the end it longed for, it would finally be free. So the dark presence is beholden to what's written on the pages. Ow. Oh, no way. No fucking way. That didn't even light up. The bear trap didn't even light up. All the other ones did, not that second one. Run. Run, damn it. He has so little energy. a gun it looks like the patients escaped the lodge dawn as the Anderson brothers walked unsteadily away from the clinic with the other patients in tow knowing that this time they wouldn't return the darkness around them seethed with horrors but Tor and Odin were unafraid their eyes glinted with guile they knew every secret path and there was blood on their hands they had fought these shades before yeah, back in the 70s, right? That's why we're looking to the farm to see if they have any clues and information on how to fight this darkness. Because it's been here before. Someone had left a gun behind. Now I had a fighting chance of reaching the farm. The taken are filled with darkness. Okay. Nice try, bucko. Okay, clearly y'all need to get shot in the face.
see you. Okay. I'm getting to that light. Bitches. Didn't even waste any of my bullets on y'all. I could see the car, but there was no sight of the driver. I didn't see a driver in it when it was going up the mountain. Hello? Anybody here? Ah! Barry! Ah! Ah! No! Danny, you're not! Ah! Please! Ah! 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 What are you? What are you? Ah! No! Fuck! No! The front door was locked. Locked from the in from the outside where I can't get out. Makes doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But okay. I know you. You were in jail the other day. I went the farm again uh, for the moonshine you know it, it makes you see they're they're not gonna miss it they're in the loony bin uh, my buddy Danny I lost him something's gone wrong with him uh, it's not him like a real bad follow-up to a real good movie the best friends suddenly the bad guy who, who wrote this crap anyway okay well he is out of commission wants me to. The story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story, and it's going to kill her, and me, and everybody in this town. No one will survive. Darkness will consume everything. This is what it's wanted all along. It will be free, unstoppable. It used Alice to get to me, dangled her in front of me to keep me going. It was never going to release her. I'm going to change this. I'll escape. I've written myself into the story. I'm now the protagonist. This feels like a terrible risk, but it's the only way to save Alice. I'll be bound by the events of the story just as much as anyone else who's been woven into it. The story will okay. stay true for this to work. There have to be victims along the way. Near escapes. Cliffhangers. In a horror story, it can't be certain that the hero will succeed or even survive. He almost has to die. I'll write my own escape into the story next. I need help. Zane's going to be the one who will help me. I'll make it happen. So damn hard to see where I'm going. I know it's supposed to be dark, but I'll oh, get the hell out. away. I'd need a car to get there fast. Hartman considers Mott and Wake. Hartman considered strangling the idiot. Mott was mean-spirited, but easily manipulated. 
an emotional infant who lived for his approval. Wake, by contrast, was a far more difficult subject. Maude had given him too much leash. In two days, who knew what could happen? Hartman would have to find a way to rein him in, and quickly. Make sure we don't miss any collectibles. Aha, there's something in the basement. See that? Yeah. Let's uh, head down to the basement. Hell yeah. Creepy. Nice. Just checking this stall really quick. <clears throat> Nothing. If Barry wasn't up here, he was probably in trouble down at the farm. For a moment, I felt bad for doubting him. After all, I've made it this far myself. But Barry was Barry. Gotta stop and pick up the coffee thermos. Oh shit. Does want me to get out? Fuck. Can I go in any of these buildings? Aha! Hidden treasure. Nice. Revolver, flare gun, flashbang. Hell yes. We're getting geared up, boys. They're gearing us up for something. Fuck. Go ahead, come in here. Go ahead. Get the fuck out.
Definitely dodged. Okay. Let's keep moving. We're getting close to the stage that he that Alan mentioned. It's like a concert or something that they said set up. Like a heavy metal concert or something. I'd known the brothers used to be some kind of rock stars, but it hadn't really sunk in until I saw the stage. Nice. Nice. Sick. I'm so glad you decided to go it alone, Mr. Bronson. Shut up and shoot. Oh, heavy duty. Ow! We have to fight him off! I can set off one of the fireworks from here and help you out! Hey, ow! Did you notice there's a lot of ammo and stuff around? Okay, get the hell back. Yeah. This is sick. Oh, you, you prick. You're a fucking prick. And you're a prick, too. Fucking dickhead. Ran up on me while I'm getting my my shit out of the box. You jerks. You jerks. Look at that. Would you look at that? Fuck you. Oh, you tried it. You frickin' tried it. What the hell is this shotgun? Oh. It's got like a huge clip in it. Awesome. You jerks. You big fat jerks. Fuck you.
Oh, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was awesome! Bright Falls, rock and roll capital of America. All right. Well, that was sick. Let's go ahead and check our surroundings, make sure we're not leaving any pages. And hey, would you looky here? Mulligan questions Nightingale's Kelly orders. Tuned Thornton's chatter out. He didn't think riders were particularly useful people, and a huge manhunt for one stuck him as idiotic. Certainly not worth the missed opportunity for coffee and pie. It wasn't even clear what the man had done, except run from them at the trailer park. Mulligan knew he wasn't alone. The sheriff's patience with the Fed was running out. Hey, Al! This way to the farm! Go, Barry. Come on. See, bestseller? No reason to worry. Your cutout's good as new, right where I left it. I'll come back for it once we have the place secure. Yeah, that's been my biggest worry all this time. We need to get this thing moved out of the way. This is as far as I got. Or they ambushed me. Let's just check over in this uh, little shed here. Not anything? Nope. Gotta check. Gotta check your corners. I think I see what you did there. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> you look at that thing, Al! They really went all out with this Viking crap, didn't they? Look at all this stuff! They must have done okay for themselves, so how come I never heard of these guys before? And this from the guy who learned about Ozzy Osbourne through reality TV? Hmm. <laughs> Hunting rifle. Nah, I want my shotgun. I didn't know he was a writer for Night Springs. Tonight's episode. The Dream of Dreams. Eh, that's by someone else. We join Mr. Jones as he explores the endless dreamscape, only to be brought to a sudden stop by the sadly mundane situation. Who's that? You don't know him? 